Hi there. Welcome to Crime and Politics with Eric and Corey. Uh, this is a show about the intersection of criminal justice and political corruption and the systemic solutions we need. And this is our uh, inaugural episode, which we're calling This is Ridiculous. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's exciting. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, you know, we, we want to have a place that we can we can talk about all the things that, you know, uh, we've seen over time, you know, getting into politics and just really seeing why we need to have uh, solutions because, you know, the, the world as it is right now is um, ridiculous. Really, it's, yeah, it's based on ridiculousness <laughs> and cruelty. And, and yeah, we got to we got to talk some talk some issues and talk some solutions. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, so what what kind of occurred to me, what, what I was kind of thinking in terms of this theme of, of things being ridiculous, it's just it's, it's pretty easy to to come up a list for the list, at least from a, a left perspective of these things that are just ridiculous. Yeah. Things like like uh, easy on the list is uh, wealth inequality. And we have, you know, billionaires existing while we while people are are homeless. And uh, yeah, yeah. De definitely that. And uh, here's one. Yep. Yep. What are you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna just say that, and uh, and just growing wealth inequality. But it looks like we're gonna we're gonna see here. Oh, that's that yeah. uh, that that fun Jeff Bezos cowboy look because you know you gotta you gotta you gotta ru rule the lower class with style. <laughs> Well, you know, nothing says elite like a phallic-shaped rocket shooting oh. into space. So, oh yeah, just... and, and right, and right <laughs> after his divorce too. I mean, it was it's just too, too perfect. So yeah, so speaking of like wealth inequality, so so there's you can find lots of charts like this. It's really not not hard, and this one you know just only goes to 2016. But you have like like this 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 uh, lighter line here is is the rest of us. You know, you get into the 2000s and, and, of course, you know, our wealth and our resources are just going down and down. And, you know, you get the top 1% and, oh, go figure. They just get higher and higher and higher. You have um, this one's on uh, on the banks. So, so this gets into the more recent history. And you have um, the largest U.S. banks. And so we have the... Um, all the COVID measures and all those issues hitting and their profits shoot through the roof. Well, well, and what happened to the rest of us? You know, we got screwed. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it, what's, what's the end game here? Is this is really something that we have to think about what something that really drives home that need to address it because, you know, the fact is for, for these oligarchs, uh, there, there is no end game in sight. They're going to keep pushing this until, until we're all ruined, essentially, until you have, they have Jeff, it all. Yep. You have a Jeff Bezos fantasy world where, you know, I, I, I truly believe if, if someone like him had their way, we would all be living in an Amazon company town. We would have our assigned job. We would have our assigned housing and all uh, like that. And so uh, like, like those charts, and this is showing that that's increasingly going into what we're doing and why we need to really halt that. Yeah, and I mean their 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 greed like it, it knows no limits. I mean they they will literally kill us all to have a better quarter. Oh, fully <laughs> for the next quarter. Fully, yeah, and, and not even think twice about it if it works out for them. Oh, definitely. I I don't even. I think especially. Um, you know somebody like like bezos or whatnot I, I don't know his background if he's always been that rich but i think when you've when you've been that rich for so long you just live in this little bubble where i think that they wouldn't even think about working class people like it's just like not even a thought in their head and so therefore it's just easy for them to commit economic violence against them which also gets into the crime part of it too mm -hmm. yes and that show is crime and politics so don't worry we'll be talking about crime as well right yes definitely <laughs> definitely um there have been those studies too, like with among you know the the rich and the ultra rich. I mean, there are even studies that like show a, a proportional decline in empathy with with how rich a person gets, and it's it's they 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 like they lose touch with with even the, the people around them and like all their relationships are transactional, and it's it's a different mindset to say the least. Oh yeah, fully, and I mean it's. 
it can be kind of like a little bit tee fun to, to joke about just because you know with, with with tragedy we have to have humor if anybody's ever seen the show silicon valley the gavin belsom mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. um he, just checking out a couple of things of that it's kind of this this good example of of that kind of phenomenon that you're talking about but yeah I and mean, when it really comes down to it is like a, a billionaire is no longer uh ethically human is is no longer uh is no longer human in the same way that that us you know making less than a million dollars a year are and I mean, mind you a million dollars a year is is not even a whole lot of money if you're jeff bezos bezos would think of that as middle class <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what he thinks working class is <laughs> so um so yeah so there's a whole list of these ridiculous things uh, you can talk about health care and you know just just the whole idea of of health insurance and health care for profit is is just inherently evil it's just it, it just shouldn't be a thing and yet it's it's what we do <laughs> it's, it's america um you can talk about you know things like education you know access to education and education quality and just you know, the divide there between the the rich and poor um there was, I think, one uh, item you hit was like criminal justice in a two-tiered system. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also like crim- criminal justice has its has its um, like history. I mean, it's a long history, but it, but in the United States, essentially, you know, criminal justice, law enforcement agencies, police departments, stuff that would become our, our like first responder police departments now, it has its roots in company police it has its roots in um in, in basically like you know um slave catchers slave runaway teams that was that was a big thing um gotta start somewhere i mean it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's it's rough to it's rough to say that i know it's you know it's, it's not something we want to think about but the the point that i'm driving home here is that the origins of policing in the united states were uh origins of of property control uh for for the wealthy and so the the reason that these these agencies were put in place is to is to protect property and who has property the rich because if you're if you're not in a, if you're not at least like a landowner then you have like very very limited amount of property to actually protect so it's just something to think in, in case of the police is like you know we tend to think of them as oh they're here for a violent crime and stuff like that no the, the origins of it is in is in control of property and that that's getting into what we're talking about here control of profits and you know to protect and serve the rich essentially and then you know the other thing i think of is um is antitrust and big corporations and and even into media um you know of course amazon's an obvious example of just this this ridiculous behemoth um what's that movie where they have like umbrella corporation the umbrella corporation on its resident evil resident evil yeah which they're 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 big pharma (laughs) <laughs> you get big farmer, of course, um, and um, and just like e- even just the, there's just so many examples that are just beyond the pale. It it just it th- these aren't close calls. Like the idea that Comcast as this huge internet provider, cable provider, and then they own NBC, <laughs> and it's like. I mean, how is that a thing <laughs> that Comcast owns NBC? I mean, that that shouldn't even be considered. That shouldn't even be on in the realm of a possibility in in any kind of functioning society, democracy, capitalism, so whatever it is. And yet, it's just a thing, and it's yeah. ramp and and it's rampant. And I mean, the other the other chart I want to bring up here is just the the media conglomeration. And of course, it, it's not just it's not just Comcast. You know, you've got Comcast here. You know, they got MSNBC. They got a stake in Hulu. They got USA. Um, you get into Time Time Warner. You know, they just own CNN and HBO. Well, you know, like you do. Where's you know, Where's Discovery you know. on this? Because didn't we just see the story recently that Dis- that Discovery is going to own? They're buying CNN. somebody. I think I think it was mm-hmm. Discovery buying CNN. That I oh yeah, it, yeah, probably buying it, buying it from Time Warner. You know, and of course you got Fox and News Corporation and, and that whole empire. Oh look, News Corporation owns Fox and National Geographic. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, why not? So, so the, they 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 use Fox to to re- report on the working class plate, and then National Geographic they like turn into a museum <laughs> where you can say like, oh yeah, here here's here's Detroit. 
<laughs> where, where you can see the working class in their natural habitat. <laughs> Remember when they used to be able to make a living? <laughs> we have we have a special look into the past display for when <laughs> yeah. people used to be able to get a fair share from their earnings. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is this is just grim. This is just grim. Yeah, so you get Sony, Viacom, uh, and of course you know Disney. <laughs> yeah, that whole schmazzle there with you know and they've got abc spn a and e um yeah so ridiculousness <laughs> yeah definitely um well yeah i mean it's it's when you know just circling back to healthcare, just the the very concept of a big pharma is you know evil in itself like for, for example like just as a very like basic thing is is we should not have uh tv ads for for big pharma that, that's just absolutely crazy um, other countries don't do that Definitely. And, uh, and, and also, uh, one thing that I, I really wish people, uh, you know, thought about more, or like really like put up more of a stink about is the, the healthcare companies as, as a defense, they will claim that they're not acting as healthcare providers, but that's just not true because they, and their billing departments and, and whatever adjusters they have will tell physicians uh, that 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 drug is not covered. That treatment is not covered. And th those are making healthcare decisions. You know that you're having your your doctor uh, prescribe you something or prescribe a treatment for you. And and if the if the healthcare company is saying, oh no, based off of whatever rules we have, you don't need that. They're acting as your doctor, and that should just be unacceptable. But it's like I feel like people don't always think of it that way. But that's how it is. Like the the health insurance company are are not only just acting as the scummy middleman, but they're, they're, they're trying to be your doctor to, 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 um, protect their, their profit line. Yeah. And, and it also gets into interest and that's, that's really another thing I, I want to hit when, when we're talking about all these things is, is it really comes down to interest and, you know, in, in, in the big, in the macro way, I mean, the, the interests of, of this, the top 0.1%, the, their interests just don't align with ours. Um, and, it, you know, with health insurance companies, I mean, what's in their interest? Their interest is to keep taking in the, uh, the premiums and the payments and deny you as much care as they can as far as because then that saves them money and that's their profit margin. And so it, it, it's in their interest to screw you. Absolutely. You know, when you're doing health care for profit. Now, there's lots of, of great. Well, you know, people doing great work in, in healthcare, you know, in the system. But if if you have it at the top, these these health insurance companies who are just doing it for for profit, it just it just adds this this evil motive into the goal enterprise. Yeah, and of course, like so many other um, industries, they they've um, they've put politics and put the government in, into their pocket um, because mm. that, that's. It's a big part of it too, because I, I can't imagine that doctors necessarily like this unless they're, you know, taking kickbacks or that. I mean, that's a big thing with 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 big Most pharma. doctors hate it. Yeah, well, why would you want to deal with that? You're 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 doing your job, and you have to fight insurance companies. You wouldn't want to do that. But also, there there's there's ways that uh, that physicians are, um, you know, big pharma. I think I don't know if it's if it's still the same, but definitely you know, big pharma kind of whining and dining doctors, kind of giving oh, them, yeah. you know. I know it's Speaking always fees. That's a big one. Yeah, exactly. It's that it's these little games that that they that they all do by by they I mean all like the you know the oligarchy and the corporate people where they're not like necessarily just like giving you a check, but it's like you said speaking fees or conferences that just happen to be in Hawaii and you have like <laughs> you know two just happens to be all expenses paid. Yeah, it just happened to be like super super nice, just like a wink wink kind of deal. Uh, <laughs> Brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Brought to you by Pfizer. This podcast is also brought to you by <laughs> Pfizer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be highlighting some um, some some meds that you know some uh, that yeah we're gonna want you to, to talk to your doctor about. You know, yeah. like we're not, you know we're not recommending, but you know talk to your doctor yeah, about. Talk to you your know. doctor about it. Yeah, I mean even, even that they're playing doctor. It's a, like that's a it's thing. crazy. It's crazy. And and of course, you know, there, there's there's different tie-ins there. Like you can go into 
Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head which which of our of our fine big pharma companies was the one that formulated OxyContin, but uh, o- opioid addiction that that kind of problem that that's that's especially hitting uh, rural America, which I know that one of the one of the shows that we watched recently were talking about you know how rural issues are, are definitely something that that mm. are something that can be talked about more um, in in this independent lefty space. But that's that's a big one in, in the rural issues, and you know it, it, that that one stems back to big pharma. I mean the 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 crimes of the of the big healthcare, big pharma um, are many, <laughs> and we could spend a lot of time talking about it. But you know, and what um, are they? They're ridiculous. They are ridiculous. Our theme of the night. That is our theme of the night. That's that's the word of the day, kids. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but hopefully, you know, my my hope is that the ridiculousness should should be should should drive the left. That that should be that should be fuel for the left. You know, that, yes. that should be that should be the type of thing. You know, all, all these these points are these can be things that that we can point out to the people we might call the normies. Yeah, the people who who haven't been, I don't know if radicalized I, is a good word. I like to call them uninitiated, <laughs> <laughs> maybe un, unawoken. They they need mm. the the great awakening. And and so when when the things go this far and, and are this ridiculous, I, I I think it does give us ammunition to really to really kind of break through. At the same time, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, one thing that I often think about is just kind of a it's not them personally as people it's not it's just a human nature thing but a lot of people won't understand this until they're in the point of life where they're struggling which which we end up in this precarious situation where like as as a lot of us know they're like walking this like fine line balance right now where they're trying to keep people in chaos but not in so much chaos that they hit the streets but that's a big part of that ammunition that you can hit where, where you're going to have a lot of people that in the next few years are going to hit really tough periods in their life you know facing eviction facing homelessness having uh you know terminal illness that they can't that that was missed because of canceled appointments for reasons over the past couple of years um <laughs> and and uh and and yeah it's um yeah, that, that that that's that's going to be stuff we can hit them with and say, "Hey, this is this is ridiculous, and this is what we need to do about it." Yeah. Well, there's that whole thing where where capitalism, you know, wants the working class to be desperate enough to 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 really pump that that treadmill, that that hamster wheel. Yeah. But of course, not so desperate and upset that they get in the streets. Yes. <laughs> that they really that they really call for it, and so. So I guess part of the job of the left is to, I don't know, maybe push people to that point, or at least open their eyes to that point where you know. I agree. I mean, as long as, long as we as long as we push them into that with demands, I don't know if we want to touch on that at all. Yeah, we're we're getting there. There's, um, so one more in terms of the um, in the list of ridiculous things that that we'd be remiss if we're not hitting on is is foreign policy and you know in in the whole the whole crimes of the empire here and and to me what you know one of the most glaring ones that that happened in in august was you know when we uh drone murdered a family (laughs) and what's kind of amazing about this is is that i mean there's a lot of things that are amazing and, and ridiculous about it but one of, one of the things about this is everybody heard about this i mean this isn't you know i say this it's not it shouldn't you'd have to be really out of touch to not to not have heard about this and you know so many times kind of the the, the crimes of the empire are kind of are kind of um not you know they, they I went to, they're not covered you know the way they should be by any stretch in in mainstream media or in corporate media and so you get you get the situation where these these things are out there but they kind of they kind of talked about it a little bit and then they kind of fade away um and then people can kind of think that well that didn't that really wasn't that bad or that was just a one off or that thing just just kind of happened and and what was kind of amazing about about this one is is it it wasn't Trump you know, this was Biden, and and it wasn't in any doubt exactly what happened because you know, as I'll bring it up here, is is you know this was right in the New York Times, 
And, yeah. you know, this was a situation where the, the New York Times, you know, did some good reporting. I mean, we have a lot of issues, you know, with, with the New York Times um, in how they covered things and have done things in the past, you know, Iraq war, anybody or weapons of mass destruction. I mean, they were fully on board. As, uh, as some lefty commentators say, um, th there hasn't been a war yet that the New York Times hasn't been in favor of. But mm -hmm. um, but this was some first class reporting year where they, they, they ran this down, this whole drone bombing. And, you know, what happened was, you know, this was after the U.S. pullout and um, and Biden wanted to, to do something to make a statement because he was getting this. The, uh, critical comments and and things from all the war hawks and so they pulled the trigger on this on this drone reaper bombing and they they murdered his aid worker and his family it included his his little kids um we had um um we had 10 children and um uh, and it, this this whole thing i mean it it kind of haunts me to this day, just just the whole, just thinking about how this played out. Um, basically, you had um, this guy going around picking up water, and and the the predator drones watching him, and they're thinking he's he's doing something else, or I don't know what they're thinking. And then and then he gets home, and and the family has this has this game that they usually play where, where he, he bet when he goes to back the car up into into the driveway, the little kids like to come up, you know, daddy's home, uncle's home, and they actually like hop into the back seat of the car and kind of get a little ride while he pulls in. And and what happens this time is, you know, Jetta Predator drone Hellfire missile and blows him to bits. I mean, and you've got, I mean, you know, You've got seven-year-old, six-year-old, you know the two-year-old, um, the two three-year-old girls, Malika and Somalia, Somalia, and just just literally blown to bits. And yeah. I, I I just don't understand how how people can can hold that in their brains and still say, you know, we got to vote for Biden and Democrats. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, obviously, there, there's there's no words for for how depraved that is. I I, I think, um, I mean, if I if if I had to say, I think that there's some kind of level of cognitive dissonance that people have in their heads where they just don't like to necessarily think of that, and also, you know, you there's just. I mean, for for the for the point of this, you know, past election, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in 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 2024, and I hope that there there is you know, some, some good third party candidate that we can rally behind and make some noise. But I mean, as, as for 2020, I mean, it really, it really quite, quite frankly, didn't matter what, what, what Joe did. And it was just, you know, not, not orange man. Um, that was, that was a big one. I mean, the thing is too, with that, with that New York times story, I mean, obviously that that's horrible, but like, it's, it, it's also just like this, like, you know, weird, uh, you know, twisted poetry on stuff. Because if I remember correctly, I think that, that the gentleman, he worked for us based NGO. And mm -hmm. I think that he he's was an aid worker. He was an aid worker. And I also think that he was on some sort of waiting list for us citizenship. I think that that, that was part it said of it. the, um, it said it is employer. The NGO had, had put them on the list. Yep. Yep. And so that's, I mean, that, 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 that happens a lot too. I mean, also like, um, you know, re regardless of, of, you know, your stance on the, on the war you know, you know, my stance is that there's, you know, we should have never been there, but, but regardless is, is, uh, you know, if you, if you talk to, to veterans, even though they'll, they'll say that when they were there, you know, there, there, there were locals that would kind of almost kind of be out of shade to, to the units and these locals would help them out with, with translation and with, uh, talking to, to local people there and just, you know, helping with some cultural things. And, and a lot of these people, um, were, were, were then later denied uh, citizenship because a lot of them, you know, they were hoping that by working with the U.S. forces, they could they could uh, get citizenship and bring their families to the United States uh, for for opportunities. And uh, and a lot of them just we just like said f them. So I mean, it's yeah, dangerous for them to work with us. I mean, it's you know, it's it's the the, the U.S. might might be a it might be an evil empire on the collapse of of uh, of completely falling apart like like the later days of Rome, but at least at least we we are benefit have the benefit of having U.S. citizenship where at least it's just a little bit easier not not easy rather to blow us up. So. But yeah, when you get into foreign policy and you deal with non-U.S. citizens, well, it, I mean, there's literally no limit on what we'll do, literally no limit. 
Well, it reminds me of a joke there. It's like people say, well, why, why don't you leave the U? You know, why don't you get out if you don't like the U.S. so much? And the retort is, well, if I left, then I'd be a victim of our foreign policy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's, yeah. That's that's true. That's true. I mean, pretty much everybody in our in our government is, is, is a war criminal. So. So I think what we want to try to do with this show also is is to try to pivot from 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 the the problems into solutions and how you know what what can we do about this mess and um i i would say that the first step in that is really kind of um figuring out what what are the real key points you know i mean and for me like like number one is just the, the mantra it, that it's the top one percent versus the rest of us that's the first you know key thing to to my view of, of leftism that you really have to have to key in on that and just make that your your guiding star mm-hmm. because it, it can be it can be very kind of clarifying very kind of focusing because you know, it, it gives you, it gives us a definite solidarity because it, there aren't too many people in, in our groups that are billionaires. You know, I, I don't know any, yep. I don't know about you. No, I mean, the thing is too, like, like on that thing is, it was, I, um, that's, that's certainly a group because we know that pop populism is, is, is popular and populism can win elections and that the, the 1% versus 99% that that's populism in my mind. The difficulty is that we need, you know, Marxist Leninist socialist uh, populism rather than, you know, other forms that have been, been popular. But yeah, that, 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 that's, I fully agree that that's a popular rallying point and that can get the people going. And that's, you know, that it's very different from the whole left, right, you know, drama nonsense of, of, you know, who's a right winger, who's a left winger. It's, you know, there are certainly things that, that need to be hashed out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's it, it's a big us, you know, the 99.9. Yeah. And then that kind of leads in into the next point of focus that I would say is is the money. You know, you, you have to you have to really be, you know, laser focused on on the grease, the thing that 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 runs everything. You know, when, when you look at Washington and government and, and politics, I mean, big money runs everything. And so if, if we're looking at what are our potential solutions to me, um, that is, is what guides you in, into the solutions in that, you know, we're going to have to do something from a left perspective about the money. And you know what I'm going to say next? It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. No. It's not going to be easy. I mean, the, the reason I say that is, is, is that it, you know, when you start talking into solutions that involve the money that gets you into things like, um, campaign finance reform, um, you know, ballot initiatives to deal with, with big money in politics. Um, move to amend style um, constitutional amendments to deal with these things and and people you know when you say things like like that a, a refrain can be well how are you going to do that you know that's that's so hard you know that's how is that ever going to happen and you know if if people have an easier path you know i'm all ears but if you're focusing on the money and and the potential solutions that's kind of where where it leads my mind yeah definitely i mean also just like you know you, you got to do something but I, I agree with you that some of the other um things that, that are put out there are seem equally as daunting and and yeah i think the money is the way to way to, way to go at it though i don't know if we want to um you know talk about some of the some of the ways that that might be possible um or to uh or to go into mm-hmm. to the list but yeah i mean where, where, where would you like to start with that um, well, we can bring up, we can, so demands and solutions, I guess, is, is what we're talking about. So let me bring up, so these are things that, um, that I came up with, with kind of the, the, the intent isn't to, to say that, you know, these are, are the big answers or whatnot, but to, to start a conversation about what, 
what can we do? What should we be demanding? And that's another big part of this is we have to have a, a list of demands in, in some fashion. Any kind of general strike, any kind of protest, I mean, you have to have demands. And so, you know, what are those demands? And and so that's kind of what I try to, to cobble together when I put up my proposed list of demands. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll go through the first ones quickly, just for the yeah. sake of time. I think I think at some point we're going to do a, a, a more kind of uh, explainer video on, on going into this. But yeah, if we can just kind of touch briefly on this. Yeah, I, I did it a while back on Sabby's show, and and I uh, and I had some equipment failure. Yeah, and I and I, I was I was only barely audible, so so I, I'm gonna want to redo on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. People just turned up their audio and <laughs> they, they heard it, so you got you the go. message out. But you Let's know, hope. now now that now we'll that you got a, a nice redo. fancy mic, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pro tip: buy yourself a good mic. It's worth it. <laughs> so we got number one healthcare. The idea of having an NHS. Um, Number two, climate emergency. Um, Number three, criminal justice reform. Uh, Number four, number four is kind of my version of 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 minimum wage. Is is I'm thinking maybe we can start talking about a minimum standard of living. Um, That gets beyond just this concept of of picking a number. You know, we 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 should all we should all be able to live like like one percenters like pmc people live you know that that should just be should just be the baseline um you got end the wars military spending imperialism you know that cuts in that into some of what we were talking about earlier um immigration reform Um, so then when we get into kind of these getting into you know with number seven gets into into the money and that's kind of the solution part of the list or the more how how do we get there part of the list and it it i do see it as the the systemic issue that that drives all the other issues um one of my favorite things to post in in chat is um nothing will fundamentally change until we fix the influence of until we fix big money in politics and government um so at the state and and local level you know the 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 states that have ballot measures um you can uh you can have ballot measures and it's not it's not a crazy thing i mean this this has happened before in in massachusetts there was a clean elections law that was on the books in the 90s and in the 2000s um, and then the legislature wiped it off the books, <laughs> like, and, and it should have been a huge scandal. Um, and so I, you know, I think our, our job, part of our job as leftists is to make these things a huge scandal when these things aren't happening. Um, these are things we, we can be getting in the streets over. Um, it doesn't even have to be necessarily ballot initiatives. I mean, if you can enact enough public pressure, you can, um, you can force state legislatures to pass laws in these directions. Um, but it's, it's gonna, it's going to take direct action. It's going to take a push. It's, um, it's going to, you know, to take getting in politicians and candidates faces about our demands. Um, and then, like I said, at the federal level, there's, um, there's the the idea of a constitutional amendment. There's the idea of of getting rid of corporate personhood. This is one of the really kind of incredible things that have gotten that has become a thing. <laughs> Another one of those ridiculous things. This mm-hmm. idea that that corporations are people. I mean, corporations are like super people. They at this point, corporations not only have the rights of human beings, they actually have more rights mm-hmm. because they end up with the corporate rights on top of the, the human rights. Yep. I mean, look, if money is speech, then we should be allowed to buy drugs because that's just an endorsement <laughs> of, of, you know, <laughs> releasing drug policy because money is speech. You know, I'm not buying drugs. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that how, how I think the drug should be legal. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and the other big thing that that and that's in the next point is is the corruption. We we need we need to start using the c word, right? 
<laughs> the C word of corruption. Um, our our Congress is corrupt. You know, our every branch of government. You know, they are corrupt. They they do the bidding of big money. That's who they are. That's what they are. And we need to stop. You know, acting like like that's not an obvious thing that that it's not polite, you know, acting like it's not polite to, to talk about it and to bring it up. It is simply the case, you know, they, they are corrupt. I want to see us start, start getting into politicians' faces when they, anytime they, they, they show themselves in, in public um, and just start screaming at them, you know, you are corrupt until you show me something real um, that makes me think you're not. And that's also one that that ties into criminal justice because the the, mm -hmm. the agency that that their purview is to to investigate criminal corruption and government is the FBI, and um, you know that that's that's an agency that that was was literally started in corruption because the FBI was essentially like the brainchild of J Edgar Hoover, who who was just a, a famous you know. Um, enemy to to free speech and the constitution and uh so that's the agency that's potentially supposed to be investigating that kind of corruption so there, there's that that issue that of, of the neutering of white collar law enforcement and corruption law enforcement that exists there is a uh, as as kind of an overlay yeah, it's like democrats love the fbi now <laughs> yeah <laughs> essentially i mean it's it's it got right up to the it's it's funny because you had the 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 whole thing where it's like, oh, you know, a little bit of lip service to abolish the police, which is like just a, a not super well fleshed out idea in itself. Like some people did have some good ideas about it. And I do think there's a lot of uh, police reforms that need to happen. But like right from the, you know, generally that that that, that shift from the, the neolibs into loving the security state happened during the Trump era. And, and just, you know, a, a, the plain almost like fetishization of, of Robert Mueller who uh, mm -hmm. prior to being the special, whatever his title was, the special prosecutor or, or special investigator or whatnot, he was a, a, a career FBI man and director of the FBI. And so the, these are these government spooks that are that ha are being idolized now. Um, we were just even joking about this, about how, you know, hey, we, we got another one from, from January 6th. Of, uh, we're both in Massachusetts and, uh, and there was a, you know, a Massachusetts man that they, the FBI happened to, I guess, identify them by like a logo on their shirt from a picture. And it's, and it's just like, um, I don't really know how much effort went into that particular arrest, but it seems like a lot of effort. And that, that's the amount of effort that they're putting into to jamming up, you know, some, some misguided you know, person that was just pissed off at the government for, for good reason, because that's the thing about those people that went to January 6th, they, 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 they can be allies too, because they understand that, that the system's rigged and they understand that it's F they're coming from a different political perspective. And they, those would be people that we would want to try to say like, Hey, you know, let's, let's not, let's not go in that direction. Let's, let's talk about socialism. But you know, those, those, those are our allies more so than any of these people. And so it's like the, this, this loving of the security state that you're getting in with, with neoliberals. It's, it's very troubling, very damaging. And you know, they're showing us who they it. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, and so a lot of these 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 things that we're talking about, they they they're, they're going to like try to play these off as like the mass unwashed. So yeah, going circling back to the original point of of of, of corruption, hmm. that is that is something that that we need to call out and be very particular on because we we you're never ever going to be able to trust the official the current official agencies that are supposed to be tasking uh with corruption investigation and enforcement we cannot trust those people so that's a, that's a big one for for getting into the street and demanding um d demanding is 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 you know quite frankly we, we need to yeah i mean there's there's a lot of people that that should be in, in prison now that should that 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 you know but that's not even the big point it's not about it's not about one person it's it's basically about you know um addressing a whole system one thing that i think is really important there is the transparency um i know you feel the same way yeah so that's let's bring back the list so that's another one in in here is is demand radical transparency for all representatives in agencies mm -hmm. and and I'm actually stealing a little bit from Caitlin Johnstone, who will we have to talk about in future. Mm -hmm. um, um, in that, it, I, I'm a, I know at one point she's written that we should have 
um, radical transparency for everyone in power, and we should have um, extreme privacy for everyone who's who's not a powerful person. Mm -hmm. And in the amount of transparency that you have should be proportional to the amount of power you have. You know, more power should mean more transparency. And it's another one of those things. Go back to that word. You know, ridiculous. It's um. Um, that that these agencies these um, they they work for us you know and in this idea that that we have all this opaqueness and classification and and all these things kept kept secret from us is it's just not acceptable it, it's just one of those things that that we need to be that we need to be demanding and that we, we need to set a really high bar for agreed it, yeah, you're you're right. It sh it should piss us off. And and uh, yeah, the classification system they classify everything. I mean, first of all, I, I I don't even really believe the line about oh it's for national security or whatnot. I I just I just don't buy that at this point. Maybe at a, at a certain point, you know, before really getting into the, this kind of uh, politics and this kind of critical thinking about the government, you know, um, especially because this stuff is based off of fear. So you know, po post nine eleven was a scary time for everybody in this country. There were other times there were things that were going on and so it's fear and so you kind of believe in this sort of nanny state taking care of you but yeah they, they they classify anything and everything and if you really like dig into to what goes on into wikileaks mm -hmm. and you look into what documents had been classified that have since been been uh, you know uh, released by by journalists that's another big thing that that's that's a whole another can of worm but but the the, the prosecution of, of journalism um in this yeah uh, they, they they classify anything and everything it's it, it's not a um it, it's not like it's for our protection or anything like that like they're like our parents it's for your protection um but yeah it's 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 bs and uh yeah i mean what they do to a science they do to us all yeah definitely you know they're really making an example of 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 him that's that's a big part of the motivation um the I mean, it, it's w with WikiLeaks like, like they they cannot like FBI, the powers that, that be, the, the security state. They they cannot point to one instance of a person being killed or injured because of the WikiLeaks leaks. It's it's not even you know they they can't even come up with anything <laughs> of of that causing damage. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't the 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 last people that that revealed an intelligence asset. The Bush administration. <laughs> and the whole it was Valerie Plame. Valerie Plame, yeah. Well, I mean, Which, it's, it's silly in itself, but I mean, no, basically, like, like just getting down into your point is, it's like you know they 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 put that out there like it's a threat, but they can't back it up, and it seems like the only time they they do that kind of thing is when they step on their own tail. Mm hmm. And and how you know how anyone can can trust anything that comes out of the security state after yep. the iraq wmd in a, in a post iraq wmd world it's, mm -hmm. how stupid do you have to be to to even to even consider it yeah I, it's like that that recently that that's that state department video um with that representative from the state department who, who it's been oh, ned yes yes Good old ned there saying yes Here, here's what we're saying and the yep. proof is well, I, I just it. told you. <laughs> yep, that like literally, he's like, "Well, that's the proof." Is I'm is I'm a I'm, I'm a government man with a nice suit and a nice haircut, and I look presentable. We wouldn't and, lie uh, to you. Yeah, exactly. That's the proof. <laughs> is, is I said it. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. Do, do you you, so that, like another big thing that 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 you know I, I know that that's important for for you, Eric, and for me too is is to not, um, you know, lean back on I'm just done with electoral politics. And that what we really need is 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 a proper democracy, but you can you cannot have a democracy without government transparency, and, mm -hmm. at yeah that that's it's just um it's just that's just a big thing, and that's actually another one of the the key points that 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 I want to kind of zoom in on or keep in focus is is the whole idea of of democracy, in that. You know, we, we, we have to have a, a functioning democracy. I mean, I, I just don't see another way that, that humans can organize 
without it going real bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and what we needed is more democracy, and we need a democracy of, of people, you know, one person, one vote, you know, and not a democracy of dollars, which we, you know, to a certain extent have now. And so when we're looking at, you know, what can we do about this mess? You know, what are our potential solutions? I really think democracy, more democracy, real democracy has to be um, a real part of that. And that gets into kind of the next point potentially here is that one of the things that that people will say is that, um, you know, how can we have democracy if we can't trust our elections? And that's certainly a fair point. And so that really has to be one of our key demands and that we need you know, elections that, that we can rely on. And if we're not getting them, it's another one of those things that, that we should be protesting over, that we should be getting in, in the streets over. But we have to be clear about what that means. You know, we have to be smart about what, what are we asking for? What are we, um, what are we demanding? And you know, this, is, this, the, this can be one place where I think I, I can differ. I may differ somewhat with some other of my lefty friends in that one of the ways of one of the things for election reform that's put out there a lot is to do it on paper. You have paper ballots. And I, you know, you, you can do that to some extent for some of your election processes in, in smaller scale elections. But once you get into um, larger cities, once you get into the processing of results, the paper ballots don't really get you there. It's e- even even if you're doing it all on paper, you're still gonna you're still gonna have machine counting. It, it's still okay. it's got to get into a computer sometime. Yeah, put it that way. Like when when, when I go Oops. vote, um, you know, it's like you have like a sheet, and then it's like it's like a, a marker. Thing. Yeah, it's like a scantron thing. It's, it's in school, you do it, and then you put it through the machine. So that, so like, and then that's, that's once it gets going, into that machine, yeah, you want to explain <laughs> that because I don't, I don't know if everybody really understands what's going on there. So that, that, that when they do that, that scans into. So it's on paper at that point, but then once you put it in that machine, it's going into a scanner, and and even if even if people are looking at it to double check it, I mean they're entering it then into a computer. And once once you once you cross that line, then you're in software land. I yeah. mean, that's that's software. <laughs> and, you know, I happen to be a software engineer and, you know, I know a bit about software. And once, you know, it's in there, you know, you're in the world of software. Yeah. And so the way the way to secure that, the way to make that something that that we can rely on and depend on is to make the software open source. And so this, in my opinion, needs to be one of our key demands. You need all voting machines and software to be open source and to be auditable by the public. Sure. And what that means is all the code is posted somewhere. Anyone can look at it. And so the code has to be resilient enough and secure enough that even if hackers can look at the code, they still can't break into it. And that's that's the power of, of open source, secure, well written, well done open source software. And it's really it's really the only way to have true security and to have true reliability. So I'm asking this as, as as more of like a clarifying question for people that might not you know know too much about open source software. But so if you had a, a software like this, like election based software that was open source and the the code was was there in public, if if people can see that code, can they see potentially like election results? Like where did where did that the, the tally of votes? Where does that live? Mm-hmm. So the open source gets into the processing. And it, this is really the, the the machinery and and how and how it runs. So it would be, you'd be able to see the, the code of, of like the how the scanner runs and how the results come off the scanner, how they get counted, how they get tabulated. Um, right now, the way it works is these machines are purchased by from for profit companies, and and the code. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, put it on the list of ridiculous things. This code is code is closed. It's closed source. You ridiculous. can't look at it. Yeah. And so if us. some <laughs> and if some malicious actor in the company puts in a back door where they could go in and change things, you know, then it's just sitting in there and, and maybe someone else at the company sees it, maybe they don't. If it's open source, the whole world can see it. And yeah. if there's a back door in there, you can see it. 
Um, in terms of the results and the in the counts, what what you would see is you would see how they're handled. When when you see, and people who who know code and who, are, who can read code would be able to see how it's handled, um, whether it's secured, whether there's potential for malfeasance in there. You can have, I mean, like when you go to the ATM, um, it's not open source, but you get you get an audit trail in a sense in that you get that little receipt from your ATM. Yeah. So the way we could run voting is, you know, even if everything is on the touch screen, um, it, which still doesn't have to be, but if it is, um, you you can have it give you a receipt. I like you know, that. We could That's have pretty cool idea. Mm hmm. Um, I think some systems run that way somewhere. I, I've, I have heard of that. But That's you can have it give you a receipt. It you can give you a the, number. The little sticker is not good enough. The I voted <laughs> sticker. <laughs> you voted. And so you can have a receipt. You can pin that to your chest if you want. Um, and it can have a number. It can have a QR code. And mm -hmm. so every voter, you could have a system where every voter can then, when they get home, they can go on their on their computer, and or their phone, scan in the QR code or put in the code, and have it verify their vote, yeah. have it show all their votes, and if if every if every part of that verification is open source, is auditable, is known, then then you have a secure system there. Oh yeah, no, so that's interesting. It, it's possible. That's really interesting. Yeah, no, that, that's that's not really interesting. I never even thought about some of that stuff. That would, I think that would allow to give people confidence. But the other thing too is like, mm -hmm. as far as I know, like where we stand today, we can do that with the tech. Like the tech is is there that we Easy. could we could definitely do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we do it now in other venues. I mean, the these software systems are are good enough for the banks, <laughs> and they they make sure that works in terms of their. Um, they're being able to to know where the money is <laughs> and they don't lose track of the money yeah and so you know we, we need to have something along the lines of 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 getting you know, getting that to work for us yeah so yeah so to kind of move through this, through some of these um you can have um election um ranked choice voting of course is you know is a big one to get rid of the spoiler effects um you know opening up ballot access um you know electoral college there is a way to fix the electoral college um there's taxation and funding that gets into a whole idea of of wealth inequality and and how taxes work uh, and the the final one I have on the list, at least at this point, is is to democratize the enterprise that gets into businesses and just can we have democracy in our workplaces, in our businesses? And you know, it's something we should demand. It's something that um, could be transformative. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, we got to we got to reclaim the government. I think that's that's interesting. I, th I think definitely one of the things that we're going to probably try to do is uh, is uh, I'd love to, to take a couple episodes and just break apart a, like one or two of those things and do like a real deep dive so that that we can actually like present you know like some of the meat of what we would view as as, as solutions and can possibly be out there. Because um, yeah, I mean, one of the things is definitely uh, you know us as as a movement have to have to get out there in the streets and 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 start. Like one thing I always like that you talk about is just, you know, the fact that we should be going to, to politicians or, or people that are running and just di disrupting them, you know, just like mm -hmm. protesting, putting them on the spot, making them uncomfortable um, and, and, and demanding these things and asking them where that where they really stand. Is it with, with us or, or with them being the, the, the oligarchy? And and if you have a list of demands, then, you know, you have something you're asking for. Like there was. There was this there there was this rather infamous now live stream about um, um, seizing the house and um, and and the only candidates they they promoted were like in the Democratic Party were you know were, were primary candidates and and they didn't even seem to have any any time for third party candidates and. Part of we need to be able to differentiate why these Democrats aren't acceptable. It's not enough to just say you know we didn't like what the squad did or whatnot. But I, I feel like we need to really have a set of demands like this to say 
you know, this is what this is what we need. You know, if we're going to vote for you, if we're going to support you and we need you to be to be calling out Democrats as corrupt as what they are. Yes. Yeah. To me, that that's the tell that, that they're not doing it. I agree, and and I mean, I I, I personally like uh, I I don't trust any. I think that's what you're saying too. I don't trust anybody that's going to be running as a Democrat. I just don't. Um, I mean, if, if they really like started calling out other Democrats as corrupt, if they signed on to our demands in a substantive way, if they really started making trouble, um, you know, we, we could maybe maybe put them on a probationary <laughs> support. Oh. <laughs> maybe <laughs> only only if they <laughs> only only if they uh <laughs> um only if they wear a shirt that says have you donated to your local war criminal it's just nancy pelosi <laughs> <laughs> disavow the leadership yeah well it's that thing you know how can you be um it, not you, you can't be like like non-corporate if you're taking your orders from from the corporate democrats yes you know that's because there are things they could be doing they you know this was, this has been brought up a long time ago they they could form a block and they could um and and they could they could form a a, a block and say that we're not going to cooperate until um until we get our demands met um, they could they could secede into their own party you know talking about like Bernie and the squad and just they, I was thinking like like they talk about protesting. You know, they had these lame protests on on the Capitol steps. I mean, if you want to do a protest, I mean, how about if if you put up pictures of the children that we drone more drone bombed onto onto you know one of a cardboard display or whatever, and and go to the floor of Congress and just sit there with that picture and yeah. say you know say their I'm names. not and say their names and what we did to them. And say, you know, I'm not moving until we have some justice in terms of who's responsible for this drone murder, until we end the drone program. Yeah, just as a start. I, you know, you want to see anti-war? That's anti-war. Agreed. I think we really saw their colors. I mean, obviously, I I agree. It it is it is ridiculous, and it is it is not acceptable that 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 our our leaders were were not pushed more on 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 i mean mind you the 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 instance that we brought up with with the man and his family um being just like taken down innocently by by our hellfire missile that's that's unfortunately one of many stories but it but it's an awful one and it's a ridiculous one but the fact that that yeah i i I think that's not enough i think it's almost like a mix of like well first of all just just to circle back is is i think with with the squad i mean i i think i know that that you maybe were a little more suspicious of them. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i i was really into aoc before she was elected i i got excited about her um so i kind of have like a little bit of like a feeling in my of my in my stomach just like a real like betrayal um but i think we really saw that on, on forced the vote too that that literally it would have cost them nothing Mm-hmm. to force that vote it would have cost them nothing the whole the whole thing about kevin well McCarthy, it would have cost them personally a lot <laughs> that's a good point and <laughs> that that's... they would have made enemies of democratic leadership yeah you, you do that I, at your peril i yeah i guess that, that i guess that's a good point and the, and they're i guess they're just not interested in doing that but but that was for i guess that was for me that was the, that was the last straw because like you said they were in a position where they had some power they were in a position where they had some power um, they still are. They have power today. Now they're not going to for much longer. Come November, um, you know, Republicans are going to take over Congress, and then all the talk about will be about oh, the terrible Republicans, and we need to support our Democratic Party heroes against them. And you know, it works out great for that top one percent, the top point one percent. Um, they always win, right? They always win. Um, but no, I mean, not hopefully not forever though. Like I, I, I do, I do agree with it. That that you know, is it is it is it Johnstone, Caitlin Johnstone, that said of the great unpatterning? Yes, the great unpatterning that we're in the middle of. Yes, which, on top of the the ridiculousness, the great the great unpatterning is that like mass waking up. I do think it's happening. I, I know sometimes mm. I'm a little bit less optimistic as used. I know when when we people have are our, get cooling in. Yeah, no, I, I, I do, I do agree with you, and I certainly do think it's this, this lineup on class line. So it's also just like to really jump into, to the little bit of the crime part of it. And, and yeah, let's of, do some crime. 
Let's do some crime. Yeah. So We've done so much politics here before we wrap up, let's do a little yep. crime. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's more topics that I can, I can, you know, dive into, um, you know, crime and criminology is a particular interest for me, but the big thing that I'd like to, to drive home now is, is the use of, of the criminal justice policy as, as uh, punitive against the people and as punitive against the poor. Um, so essentially with the Reagan era's 1980s uh, war on drugs, which which actually like going back to to be fair, like it wasn't, it it was it was Nixon that, that really started the the war on drugs. So it, it did happen before Reagan, but it was during the 80s there was really a big ramp up. Like we saw, you know, the DEA being idolized as, as heroes, the DEA being the Drug Enforcement Agency. Which interestingly on that too is like we we uh the the, the dr drug policy is as we as we think of it and drug policy ties in intimately with crime it is completely manufactured like like prior to like 1920 there was no enforcement there was there was no drug code that's why you would see like old tiny stuff where you would uh, see like the cocaine throat lozenges if you go to the pharmacy that really just didn't exist uh during the the world war one uh reefer madness kind of became a big thing and that was that was something that was talked about and uh partially it was um tied to the anti-war protests because uh people that at the time were were anti uh, world war one and anti going into war were associated with, with marijuana use and so even that kind of criminalization comes into like uh turning it as as against the counterculture and against the and against that so uh, that that's 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 all BS. But we we have this dichotomy where we've talked about there, there's basically no enforcement for like antitrust for breaking up monopolies uh, for government corruption that 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 in that crime enforcement is is basically sleeping at all times. But we have the, this huge amount of effort that are going into arbitrary drug laws, seriously arbitrary drug laws because it's all about the, who the target is, right? Yeah, and in this case, it's it's the poor. Um, one of the things that uh, people will talk about, I, I guess they have changed it, but there used to be this discrepancy between uh, powder cocaine and crack cocaine. Um, so just like a real basic, I'm sure a lot of people know what, what cocaine is. It's a stimulant, it's a drug. So powder cocaine is typically more more expensive and it's, and it's more associated with people of, of means. Um, and crack cocaine is is basically a, a um, an adulterated version of cocaine that that's very cheap and sold on the streets. Historically, cocaine has been you know associated with the upper class. You know, in the in the 1980s, it was a big thing. Wall Street, uh, crack cocaine is typically um, associated with with uh, poor people, and in in particular, there is a racial aspect to the, the a lot of the messaging around it has been targeted against people of color. Um, the the sentencing discrepancy was was one to one thousand. So basically, for for one gram of of cocaine you would if you had that same one gram of, of crack cocaine it would basically be be treated as as a thousand times more in terms of sentencing and minimum sentencing so just like encoded into it is 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 against the poor um and so the the bigger point here is like i'm saying these are non-scientific things in the united states the drug enforcement agency which is not a scientific agency um it is a law enforcement agency. They are the ones that have the scheduled substances list. So the DEA, a police agency, are the people that tells us, including medical doctors, including researchers, including scientists, they're the ones that tell us which drugs are the most dangerous. So that is the police telling medicine and science what is more dangerous. Um, and, and that is used to, to, uh, to other people. Uh, the, and it, and it, it continues to now be used as, as this thing of class. This is what's ridiculous: is that you have the, this this um, very very stacked criminal justice system that are are using this to scare you and using this to 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 stymie lines because uh, fear is a big of part of control. Control. I was going to say, yeah, cops yep, are fear. trained to control, right? Oh yeah, I mean that's something I can the talk DEA about. DEA or cops. Yeah, that's something that I can talk about a lot at some other point and maybe a different episode. I do have some exper experience working within the law enforcement world um, doing d d various things, but there's a very much us versus them mentality. But the big thing is, um, is that these uh, police departments, these police officers, which I said have their root in property control, uh, being there for the oligarchy, they use things, especially like the war on drugs, and especially things uh, called quality of life crimes. So quality of life crimes are going to be crimes that that are petty. And basically, the only uh, point of it is is to to protect uh, the, 
you know, the sensibilities of, of the wealthy, things like loitering, things like panhandling, just things that are, are very stupid, but that if you live in a nice neighborhood, and you have a nice condo and you're a douchey tech bro, you don't want that outside your front door. Um, that that is being used to control because part of the things that that will keep people voting for for either a democrat or a republican is this fear of crime you know they'll tell you that that there's people out here that are out here to hurt you and whatnot um and 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 that and it's just not true it's just it's just not true it's ridiculous and that is not what's hurting you is is the person that that's you know dealing with addiction with dealing with poverty they're they're not your threat the threat is 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 the people on wall street the people with suits you know it's it's and it's it's just this, this paradigm shift that that is used to, to control and uh we need to figure out who the real criminals are yes as yeah a, as a society definitely and it's also the, the the whole thing of of uh of of the rich pitting the poor against each other to fight it's um yeah you know you you have a lot more in common with uh, assuming there's no billionaires that are going to hear this, you have a lot more in common with, with, with the person that that's, that's in jail over that. Um, and so, yeah, it's something I definitely get very fired up about something that I can talk about more, but yeah, at the, at the end of the day, the criminal justice system is, is BS. Um, it, it ruins lives, ruins families, and it's used as an element of, of control uh, from the oligarchy. So, as we wrap here, I think we can say uh, in, in future episodes, we definitely want to be talking about that and and the solutions to that. And they're, of course, you know, tied in because um, we can definitely come up with, with fixes in, uh, in the legal codes and the laws of what we want to do. Um, but we need to have non-corrupt representatives to, to enact those things. And so yeah. it's, it's a joint project. Agreed. Do you want to do you want to uh, end off on something a little fun and look at feudalism then or now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Do you want me to bring up that chart? Yeah, if you could. So there's just this this chart out here that that we that we saw that we'll pull up in a second that just um, you know, sh shows the the differences between the the old school style of feudalism where, and where we are now. And I just think it's it's a, you know, a little bit of like a quote unquote fun way of just uh really driving home you know where where we stand we as 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 working people stand in uh in society here so um we got feudalism then and now so um uh up at, up at the top there which which they're they're calling the point zero 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 one is uh monarchs versus versus central bankers um that's 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 crazy because eh? I, I always think it's funny how we, we talk about it. it's it's even more than the one percent it's the point zero one percent but apparently this is the point zero 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 one percent they're really getting down there they're really getting down there um so central central bankers so i i mean it's like what 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 else do you even really need to know i mean this is this is going to be like your, your billionaire class i mean the, a, a big thing is is just there, there, there should be nobody that holds this amount of assets or controls this amount of assets because getting into the central bankers that that that's a big thing is it might not be their own personal assets but you have a, this this global capitalist uh thing going on where where they basically can just control uh peoples and countries uh with 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 minute uh financial details with minute financial changes with, with loans controlling who has loans it's the same with 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 uh with in 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 our community uh with in terms of financial policy that that keeps uh poor people from from owning homes and owning lands that that that's a very simple way of how you can control people from having that that kind of material gain so when you have that 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 big class here and it, it only grows things are just going to get worse yeah so <clears throat> kind of the the dividing line um in terms of like a raw number i like to throw out there is like a hundred million dollars yeah. If, if you've got like a hundred million dollars, like in the bank and in assets that you can throw around, then then you're really up in that different class. You know, you're up in that billionaire class. Yes. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. In terms of, uh, I think I can throw in some good news or some you know ways that that this can be uh, attacked. I mean, one one thing that occurs to me is that um, we don't have um, a king in all this on our side. 
Mm-hmm. Back in the old days, you had you know King Henry the Eighth there, who could, who could sign your death warrant if you um, if you got on the wrong side of him. Yeah, um, and it, at least there's there's some potential saving grace in that there there's more than one king. You know, yes. as much as Bezos is is trying to do it, there's there are competing interests, and they compete with each other, and they're cutthroat with each other. I think one of the one of the things the left can work on is is how can we use that against them. Because they they will cut each other to the knees to to get a little bit ahead, you know, to earn an extra few bucks. And they, there's got to be a way to to leverage that against them. Um, if you start, you know, if, if you start taxing their competition, you know, they they may not mind that so much, even if that tax is in the long run going to bring them down. Yeah. And the other thing that occurs to me is is looking at you know the the chart with our corporate feudalism. Well. Where, where might be the weak point? Where might be the point, you know, in this line of, of control that, that we could attack, that we could, be work, that we could work on? And, you know, a potential weak point that occurs to me is, is right about here. If you can, yeah, you can see my, uh, my little cursor there between, between the corporate elites and the elected officials. Well, how do they, how do they exercise that control? And it's with the money. Yes. With, you know, they're paying them off. And so if we can find a way to, to deal with that money, to have, you know, and to substitute it with the power of our numbers, because we've got the numbers, then, you know, then maybe, you know, we can, we can get in there and exercise control over the elected officials that are supposed to be working for us. So there, I think there's potential there. There's potential reason for hope there. Agreed. Um, I think another really interesting thing that, that this uh, does a good job at pointing out is see how uh, Barack Obama, who I guess in this place is just sitting in as the U.S. president, see how he's like <laughs> kind of like far down there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's interesting for people to for people to, to think about. It's something that people that that require some initiation on this need need to kind of consider is is that the, those three tiers, those three onion tiers up there of money people. Are, are above the president. That's why, like, I'm, I'm not saying that you know Bernie Sanders had the necessarily like a, like like backbone to 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 be um, that kind of you know real socialist um, um, agitator that we needed. But you know that, that's a lot of people would say that that the the um, the ruling class or let's say these banker class up here these these top three tiers would have preferred um trump o- over over bernie because at the end of the day what what this really says is who's going to jump higher exactly the, the, money. the money's the one exactly the money is the one up there and it's 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 why democrat and republican are, are both moneyed bought parties and so what you really need is is in that soft thing of, of of where we can at least in theory elect different people to to disrupt that top three because the, the president at this point has just been a, a, a marionette actor for, for these real top money classes. And so I think that's interesting that you can see that here. And as long as the money runs everything, this is how it's going to operate. Yep. And uh, also, you are here at the bottom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> at that one too. Here unless, we are. Unless you're... The uh, but there yeah, are a lot unless, of us at least. I mean, maybe somebody, maybe somebody's at top professionals, but the next there one is go. top bureaucrats, and I don't think Condoleezza Rice is watching this. So, <laughs> <laughs> Condoleezza, Condoleezza is not going to help. Condo, Condo elitist, Condo elitist <laughs> Rice. <laughs> but yeah, I hope coming out of this though, we we can um, we can have some room for hope. You know, some as much as I I love Chris Hedges, it, he does he does talk down hope. Yes. <laughs> He kind of he kind of describes hope as as a luxury that 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 we can't afford to have. But I, I guess my view is is more it's something that um, that we need if, we, if we're gonna if we're going to have a movement that's going to get big here. We're going to have yeah. to give people a path. We're going to have to give people that that kind of hope. I agree, and uh, yeah, that's a good note to end it on. Keep up the mm-hmm. hope, and, uh, <laughs> and yeah. Um, talk to you next time all right <laughs> hope, yeah we'll hopefully we'll do it yeah we'll do another one of these and we'll we'll see where that one goes hey just just keep just keep talking keep hoping let's do it let's do it all right until next time <laughs> until next time <laughs>